Hello, Hallmarkies. Have I got a treat for you today. We are talking not only to someone who will be celebrating his birthday soon, but we are talking to the king of winter, the king of Christmas, the Hallmark series king, Mr. Kevin Blue Eyes McGarry. <laughs> wow. What an introduction. Wow. <laughs> Did I mention I majored in theater? <laughs> That's great. No, I can tell. You've, you've got the range. I can hear your projection is amazing. Oh, well, you can hear you, you at the much. back of the room, so they say. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> so, welcome back. We're so happy to have Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, we promised. We promised we'd get you back once the season was underway. So mm -hmm. we make good on our promises here on the Hallmarkies podcast. <laughs> so first of all, happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, are you are you sharing your age or are you keeping it a secret for your own amusement oh, like Chris McNally I, does? Because, you know, according to the Internet, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And according to the Internet, I think he's like 24 and 39 or I don't know. He's got a bunch of ages out there. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, I keep things personal. To, you know, there's, that's yeah, uh, totally, totally understand that. But yeah, I think 1927. It's I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's out there. Nin that's when I was born, 1927. So mm -hmm. you can do the math. <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm still, oh uh, my goodness. still kicking. <laughs> you, you, what are you using? You look incredible for your age. It's just uh, a lot of moisturizer. A lot of moisturizer <laughs> every hour on the hour. Hair dye, I'm sure. Uh, hair dye, yeah. Yep. I just, oh, I go to I sleep in like a cryogenic chamber. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's all out there. I'm sure you can look at my profile and I'll tell you what I do. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So uh, do you have any birthday traditions that you like to do? Do you have a favorite place that you like to go to when, when, you, go, when um, you celebrate your birthday? What's, what's a birthday life, a birthday day in Kevin McGarry's life? Oh, man. I, I'm not big on birthdays myself. I mean, I don't really have a... A place that I go. The tradition is, I mean, my birthday, I think it's out there that it's March 19th. It's actually March 18th. Um, and it's the day Good after to know. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Again, see, I don't say much. So, I mean, if, if the internet wants to roll it, I'll just be like, sure, it's March 19th. Um, but it's March 18th. <laughs> it's the day after St. Patrick's Day. Um, so, in my youth, uh, and maybe you eons know, ago, continuing on, eons, <laughs> eons ago. <laughs> because it was St. Patrick's Day, we would all go over St. Patrick's Day and, you know, we'd have a few uh, pints. And then by the time it hit 12 o'clock, you know, it would be March 18th. And that would kind of be the celebration because nobody would remember the next day. Everybody would be too hungover to, to celebrate my birthday. <laughs> so it's always just kind of bleeded in there with, uh, with, with St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Which works out because I'm Irish. So it does. It does. Uh, you are. Know yeah well i mean yep. gary that's uh, yeah, yeah yes but you never know where it comes from so <laughs> that's true that's <laughs> didn't want to make any assumptions yeah no. my my uh th my dad's side of the family is irish too so oh so got go. it yeah. gotta no, love I wish... those irish <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we're okay we're, we're a good group i think so let's hear your best irish accent oh i don't you don't want to hear that this is it's just going to sound like a leprechaun and I'm going to, and it's, I, I can't, I've never really been asked to do an Irish accent. It's like, oh, tee -tee -tee -tee. that's all I really got. Did that, that, that works. <laughs> oh, tee -tee -tee. oh, you know, the Irish. That's all. That's yeah. I don't know. Hey, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear your best Irish accent. Well, that's what you want me to be saying. You know, I got, to oh, there you go. I could be saying. <laughs> that's nice. You got like a little pirate in there too. You got an Irish pirate. Red-handed Jill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, you were born in Ontario, right? I was, yeah, in a small I, town I called King Carden. I tried, what is it called? I tried to pronounce it and I couldn't it, for the life of me. King, King Carden, King Carden. It's, uh, King Carden, okay. King Carden, yeah. It's actually it's like Scottish town, oddly enough. Um, huh. Yeah, small town. I think it was 5,000 people when I lived there. And wow. it's right, it's right on Lake Huron, which I think is one of the prettiest lakes uh, in Canada. 
Oh. Uh, one of the Great Lakes. So, I mean, it does look like you're on an ocean. Um, sure. And uh, we had this thing every Saturday, every Saturday in the summer, the whole town kind of goes down, it comes downtown and this pipe band, um, because it's King Car and Scottish, the pipe band mm. goes up Main Street and then turns around and comes back Main Street and then everybody kind of like has a little bit of party in, a, in the pavilion. Uh, and then there's this phantom piper who goes up in the lighthouse and plays the sundown because the sun would set over uh, over Lake Huron. Mm. It's really pretty. It's a great spot oh. to go vacation. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. And what was your favorite thing to do as a kid? Oh, I had so many things. I mean, I don't know. I think really just kind of playing with friends. I really like to be social. And anytime mm -hmm. I was with kind of my group of friends, I had a good time. So. Yeah, you know, Concord was a great place, place to grow up too because you could just, I mean, it was a small enough town that nobody kind of worried. Like, you know, you'd go off and play and go to the woods and go to the beach and, you know, just kind of take off and have an adventure. So it was... Uh, just be home by never, dinner. Just be home by dinner, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, that was a time, yeah, back in the day when nobody was like, yeah, go ahead, just be back before dinner. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice? And now I'm freaking out because, you know, in, at our house, we don't have a fence. So if my kids oh. want to go play outside, then I got to go with them. Go watch them. Yeah. You get leashes, though. If you put them on leashes, oh, just I really could, long But then leashes. I'd still have to go out, you know. <laughs> eh, you could just kind of watch them from the kitchen. Make sure, if, as long as there's tension on the leash, they're still my there. Two, my two-year-old would find a way out. Really? <laughs> oh my goodness. I've got four kids, two girls and two boys, and my wow. two year old, he's he's the youngest. And oh my gosh, the things that that kid gets out of, it's just, <laughs> he would find a way. <laughs> wow. So, speaking of kids, uh, how many siblings did you uh, grow up with? Well, how many siblings do you have? I have one. I have one brother, uh, and he is a, a year younger than I am. So, oh, wow. Yeah, we actually we spent a lot of time growing up together, kind of playing. Yeah, just one. Just, uh, just my parents well, had to stop after that. They're like, two is too many. Two is two, two boys. Is just enough. Two boys, <laughs> I know. And they're like, that is, that's that's where we're tapping out at two boys. So I bet you good guys for you for got the four. No. right. Well, my girls came first, so oh, I see. <laughs> they ease the blow. There you go. I bet you guys had all kinds of adventures together. Yeah, like I said, you know, it was a great spot to grow up and play. And we would, uh, my brother's name is Ryan, and Ryan and I would. Um, oh, we'd that's my brother's keep name. Busy. Oh, wait a minute. Are we related? Hold I, on. I don't, somewhere. You know, we're both <laughs> Irish. We both have a brother Irish named Ryan. Brian, you know? yeah. <laughs> no, but I've got five brothers, so. Oh, okay. No, no. So, but, you know, Good somewhere, you. You somewhere down the line. We do, yeah. We've, yeah. we've got lots of big families. My my husband came from seven kids. I came from six, and then wow. we have four. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a tradition. It's a rarity around now. I think I think it's just like because you know families are getting smaller as as the world turns and gets uh, it's true busier. Yeah, yeah, that's good true. for you guys. Yeah, we we have fun. We have fun. All right, mm. so. Now, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but I have to admit. Oh, I love dying, when a question opens up with that. I'm dying of curiosity. <laughs> okay. All right. The W. The W in your name. Are you willing to share what it stands for? Because it's just oh. there and it's yeah, killing me. <laughs> totally. Well, what do you think it stands for, first of all? Hmm. Willard. Close. William. Oh, yeah? William. That's my so husband's that, name. Well, here's the other. So is it really? I'm dead this serious. Is, this is weird. <laughs> um, the deeper we go, it's um, it's actually a name um, that's kind of passed down to the firstborn of uh, who actually is coincidentally it's been all boys. But uh, my grandfather's middle name was William. My father's middle name is William. My William. Uh, Are you if, kidding when me? When I have a son, it'll be uh, William as well. And That's fun fact the way for the it is show. In my family. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> I'm dead. Okay, we, we have to be related. This is weird. <laughs> Somehow. Somehow. All right, on the show, please go ahead. On the show, Chris's middle name is William. So it, we're almost like, I mean, they cast almost the same person. I'd say Chris William McNally and Kevin William McGarry. Oh, I man. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> 
CWM, KWM. It's very, uh, yeah. Oh, anyway. Man, it's, it's, a, it's, a there, it's a good thing there are, it's a good thing that Kevin's middle name is William or there would be a whole That's true. Lot of trouble. Yeah, that works. Exactly. <laughs> At least Chris has got a beard. So that gives us a little bit, of, you know, that's a, there's some difference there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> By the way, we have a couple people on the on the podcast team who are really pushing for Nathan to get a beard, and I said, "Nope, nope, he's a mountain. Uh-huh. He's not getting the he's, beard." <laughs> he's got he's got a beard right now because nobody's asking him to shave it. So I imagine, you know, when we go back, it'll be uh, it'll, 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 it has <laughs> yeah. to be clean shaven. But I am enjoying right. not doing anything right now. It's actually getting pretty bushy. Oh, so you you're more of a you're more of a beard kind of guy. I'm more of a lazy kind of guy uh, when, <laughs> so if I don't have to shave, I don't want to. I'm just about to do um, like an indie thriller kind of thing right now. So I'm going to see if I can get away with uh, the beard in the, in the movie, but uh, who knows? It'll be diff- it's a different look too. So we'll see. But right now it's fun just not shave. So Maybe he'll come with like a big handlebar mustache, or maybe like uh, one of those old timey bad guy mustaches. Twirling. That's what Lucas should have. I think Lucas oh. as a gambler should have like one of those D'Artagnan, you know, twirly mustaches with a little like pointy goatee. That would be hysterical. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Oh, so, hey, Chris, how do you feel about that, man? Wait, Wake he's up. on here, is he? No, he's not. <laughs> oh, I thought you were like special guest. Surprise. No, we had we actually had him a few weeks back. So, um, oh. but yeah, let's uh, let's talk to the makeup department. See how that goes. Yeah, why not? All right. So, yeah. speaking of projects, you had a very busy 2019, sir. My goodness, I did. I did. almost no chance to breathe. But here it is, no. 2020, and you've had an appearance on Schitt's Creek and then when calls the heart, you got to up your mm-hmm. game, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just need a little bit of a break right now. I think I've just been enjoying seeing, uh, you know, friends and family right now. I, Cause I just, you're right. Last year was just kind of project after project after project. Yeah. So I'm just, I think I just taken the beginning of the year to just rejuvenate I was going to go on a trip, but all the, uh, all the advisories right now are like, better not fly anywhere. So maybe oh, I'll wait a, a month and just kind of see. Or also, it's also pretty cheap right now to fly too. So I don't know. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But, well, um, the year is young. The year is young. It's only March. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just about to start this, this little like thriller indie, which should be fun. And, Can you uh, share any details about it or is it still top secret? Well, I don't know many details, but yeah, so it's kind of just in the early stages. So I can't uh-huh. really, I get to play a bad guy. I mean, that's the, Ooh. That, that was the appeal on this one. That was something a little bit different. Ooh, team Nathan's uh, who, not going to be happy about that. that no, <laughs> well, they don't have to watch. Uh, <laughs> this is, he ends up being like, you think he's a good guy, but then he ends up being the one that's kidnapping people, this guy. So oh, anyways. Oh, so kind of a, dun, kind of dun, a two-faced. Uh, yeah. Kind yeah. of a two-faced kind of guy. Ooh. Exactly. Wow. So it'll be a little bit different. Um, and then, yeah, and then who knows what's going to happen this year with, uh, I think we're just still waiting on some green lights. You're seeing what's happening with certain shows. So usually around April, you kind of find out or end of this uh-huh. month, you find out. So yeah, and we'll hear about, see, you know, when goes the heart or even the other show I do, Heartland, the cowboy, that cowboy one. Yes, um, I'm, I am yeah. very familiar with Heartland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're just still waiting right now to find out. So that knows? was the third thing I think I saw you on was Heartland. Oh, really? So, yeah, the first time I ever saw you was Sign Sealed Delivered. Yeah, and... well, I think that was my very first thing into the Hallmark world. I yeah, like, oh, they're gonna yeah. It was because I just got off this show that I was on called Open Heart. Anything uh-huh. with heart in it somehow. Um, you, you've got me. a lot going on in that heart of yours, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they just put heart in it. They're like, I know a guy who only does projects that have heart in them. Um, but yeah, it was this doctor show. It was kind of a tweeny, doc, tweeny doctor show, uh, but only did mm. one season. And then, yeah, after that ended, then I flew out and did uh, uh, one of the signed, sealed, and delivered uh, MOWs. And that was, yeah, that was kind of my, the next thing, I think it was about uh, seven months later or something, then I got a call to... Uh, to star in one of them so i was like oh well, i must have done something right in the 
in the Hallmark world. You're talking about Love at First Bark, right? Love at First Bark, yeah, with Jana. Yep. Yeah. Yep, I yeah. remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> and that was so, funny because Jana and I also worked together on a on a, on a project before. We were on a, a we did a like a country musical together. Oh, really? Country musical movie, yeah, because she's a, a country star. Right. I think it's so much fun to you know just to see how everybody's paths intersect and all of that. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. fun. So speaking of Hallmark, what would you say has been your favorite Hallmark role to date? Uh, I would say Nathan, honestly. Um, I think just because it's a television show, it lends itself to be, um, you can delve a little bit deeper. Uh, oh, you know, the, yeah. movies, the movies are great, don't get me wrong, but it, you know, they're about an hour and a half and you, you know, it's always about more of the, um, the connection with the, with the two leads and, and and how those stories, you know, sure. how um, how they're going to get together and, and, you know, the challenges they face. And rarely you kind of get to just kind of dive in a little bit to the, their individual characters, characteristics. Where I mm -hmm. think because of the show, you know, and the allotted time that we get, and, you know, it's an hour every week, we 12, 10 episodes. And with the Christmas movie, I forget, is it 12? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it's it's yeah. about so, 10. Yeah, but we just get that time, um, especially this season. Um, Alfonso really uh, gave Nathan, oh, we really kind of, even the first two episodes, it's just been yeah. like <laughs> diving in a bit more to, and, and also like a bit more meat to chew on for me too, that it wasn't sure. kind of, I mean, I love Triangle's great and there's stuff happening, but I think, you know, Nathan and Lucas, they get kind of an, indi they get individualism, um, uh, in in season seven, they get they get you get to see a little bit like where they're from and why they are the way they are and yeah what choices they make outside of the love triangle you know like it builds it builds them up as 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 individual characters so yeah I think Nathan and he's also some somebody that I don't like I'm I'm not really like that in real life <laughs> um, so it's always fun to just you know just kind of fall into that little bit of. Uh, so you have no trouble talking to women then in real life? Oh, no, I found that, that part's real. <laughs> I think actually that might have been my own take on it because I was never written that he has a hard time talking to Elizabeth. I think that was just something that I was, you know, and I'm actually willing, I think season eight, if we go there, I, I would be willing to, to explore a little bit more why he is so tongue-tied and what, what was in his past and also like past lover, or, well, love that he's had in his life. and, and uh -huh. uh, you know, that maybe he got burned or something happened. Like, I mean, there's a reason why he's like this. And, and I'm looking forward to kind of opening that up. That's bit. actually one of my next questions. But before mm -hmm. I get to that one, so if you had to say somebody besides Nathan, what would be your favorite Hallmark role? Because uh, we all know how much you love Nathan. So if you had to choose somebody <laughs> besides somebody else? Nathan. I had a really good time doing um, a movie called uh, Song for Christmas with uh, Beckett. Yeah, Holden. I yeah. remember that and one. I liked all the people involved in that. I liked their director. I liked the producers. I liked um, the cast. It was, uh, I had a really good time on that one. And nice. uh, I think that one came together really strongly too. I really did. I just, I just liked that one. Yeah, so I think that one. I think, and his name was Owen, I think. Owen? Uh, no, it Dylan. wasn't Owen. Dylan, Dylan Owens, though. His last name was Owen. Actually, was according Owens. to IMDb, it's Dylan Lapp. Oh, no, you're right. It's Lapp. It's Lapp. You're okay. right. It's Dylan Lapp. <laughs> Owen was the, uh, was the, um, the one with Jana. The, 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 uh, Love at First Bark. Love at First Bark. That was Owen. Yeah. Owen Michaels. Yes. Owen Michaels. That's it. Because I think I played a character named Michael Owens on something else. Oh, my else gosh. I was, I was laughing. Yeah. <laughs> How do you guys forget. keep these things straight? Woo. I don't know. It is. But you're right, Dylan Lapp. And um, yeah, because it was Lapp Family Christmas Tree and mm -hmm. all that stuff. But it was just, it, see, it was more of an ensemble piece. And I got to, I think what I liked about that is, even though it was Becca's story or her character's story, I really had a big supporting, you know, you get to see his family and his sister and his dreams. And blah, blah, blah. Like it was just a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just had a good time with that one. So then that's your favorite Hallmark role. What's your favorite role that you've ever had ever? Oh, you know, I can't, I really can't say I've had a favorite role. I've really enjoyed, I was going to say most of them, but all of them really like I, 
there's not <laughs> one stands out. I, I, I like, I like the challenge. I, I like, I like the change. I like not sticking with anything for too long and like maybe uh-huh. doing something else. Um, but I really like, you know, I look back at all the roles and they were all great in their own way. And yeah, I can't, I wish I could because a lot of people, you know, do have them. And it's just, I've, yeah, I don't, uh, even like back to like plays and things that I've done, that, like they were all such great experiences and I'm just so happy and lucky, I think, to be doing this. Um, so yeah, I just hope. What I were some of the stuff. plays that you did? Um, well, I mean, I did uh, a few Shakespeare plays. Um, always good. Always good. I did actually, I toured this group. Uh, with, a, with a show called The Complete Works of William Shakespeare Bridged, which was the comedy that would do all uh, all the Shakespeare plays in in an hour and 45 minutes or something. Like it was, oh, wow. It, it, yeah, and it was a lot of verse. And, but it was also, a jo- I mean, it was it was a comedy as well. And I think sure. Act Two was just Hamlet. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great, though. It was a lot of fun. And we kind of, and that was, I took, I was like a producer on that. And I was, I was part of the, I was running the tour. Uh, and then I was also in it as well. So that was great. Um, I was in a festival um, called the Shaw Festival uh, in, uh, in Niagara-on-the-Lake, just above New- upstate New York. And um, I was Man, in, forget uh, the role. That just sounds like an amazing setting. Oh, it was, it was gorgeous. <laughs> it is a beautiful, and it's, it's wine country up there. And there's three oh. theaters. It's a small little town. It's beautiful. There's tons of history there because that's actually where when the war of 1812 was going on with the british and the americans oh. that's the only time that we were at war with you guys canadians and Americans. um <laughs> uh, but it was right there it was right actually the americans came down fun bit of history the americans came and like took out uh niagara on the lake like they won that and then the british the canadians came back and they burnt the white house down uh, they didn't burn it down, but they burnt it because it used to be it used to be pink. It used to be like a pink stone or something, and they huh. burnt it. And then they had to paint it over, and they painted it white. And that's why it's the White House because Canada burned the uh, the your 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 pink. Well, can- I say Canada, hey, Br- British, the Britons. <laughs> um, anyways, that's my fun. I always thought that was an interesting story. Um, but I was I worked at that festival. I did. Uh, a William Inch play called Come Back Little Sheba, which was so much fun. And just the people in it were such powerhouses. It was really fun for me just to even watch. The, the, those actors were phenomenal. Uh, I did a play called His Girl Friday, which was um, a movie uh, based on the play. His Girl Friday was a, who was in that? Who, who was this suave dude from the 30s? The uh, um, Roman Holiday. He was in Roman Holiday. Oh, oh um, Gregory Peck. No, no, but he, he falls in that category. No, Car- Cary Grant. Okay. Cary Grant. Yeah, yeah, Roman Holiday was Gregory Peck, but then, yeah, Cary Grant. Oh, uh-huh. was, Car- uh, was Cary Grant not in? Oh, then I'm wrong. And, yeah, sorry, Cary Grant was in. Um, Philadelphia Story was a big Cary yes. Grant one. So. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, sorry. So, H- Cary Grant was in, um, was in this His Girl Friday movie, but it was based off of a play called The Front Page, but then uh, uh-huh. a playwright named John Guare, 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 Guare. He uh, rewrote it to be the, the front page, um, His Girl Friday. So I was in that play. And, uh, and then there was another play called Enchanted April and uh, a shop play called Peace in Our Time. And <laughs> these are all just obscure plays that I'm just, yeah, but it was, it was great. I had, a, I had a really good time and I'd like to kind of do some more theater again down the road, but I'm just having a good time being on TV right now. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay, so maybe this maybe this will be a little bit easier, but favorite Nathan moment so far. Favorite Nathan moment so far. Um, I've got a few. I'm trying to think of like a nice one and a kind of a, a tougher one because I really liked. And there's some good ones coming up actually. Uh, there's a good one with Aaron coming up that I don't want to say, but it, it's I had a lot of fun. Um, ooh, I'm excited now. One. Yeah, I really like the story with with his father. I, I when Alfonso pitched that, and I was like, oh, I love that idea, and the idea of him having to arrest after like finally being like, okay, I'll give you a shot, and yeah, I might be wrong, and then getting the call and having to do it in front of everybody, you know, oh. like it's. I was like, oh, I love that. I mean, it's just conflict it, and stakes. Oh, and, and, it was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah. And that scene when that scene when you and Aaron. Sorry, Elizabeth, the, the, scene when, yeah, yeah. the scene when Nathan and Elizabeth 
Elizabeth are talking about his past and he talks about the ruby brooch. Yes. Oh my yeah, gosh, I yeah. almost started crying. <laughs> that was that was such an incredible scene and such a beautiful performance from both of you because yeah she's great oh it, just, oh, really, it was yeah. it was amazing yeah very you yeah. can really tell how heartfelt and how deeply you invest in these storylines i really loved it yeah yeah and it's i mean you know that like the it's alfonso wrote there were big stakes like that was a a big thing that you get behind to be like, you want to let somebody in, especially like, you know, your father and your family member. And sure. it's just, they just, they've hurt you again and again and again. And now they're back and now you can't explain to somebody because they're too young to understand that maybe like not all family is, is always good. And, and, you know, it was just, and it just, it was really put him um, kind of, you know, between a rock and a hard place where he was, mm-hmm. You know, he wanted to to make Allie happy, but at the same time, you know, didn't want to get her hurt. And and then that's why Elizabeth, and that's why, and Aaron, you know, like, and Elizabeth, uh, why well, he had to, like, lean on her and get her help. And, 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 uh-huh. and yeah, and Aaron is just, she's a great actress, and it's it's really fun anytime we get to play off each other. And when the stakes are high like that, it's it's great to kind of zone in. Yeah, I'm glad that, uh, that you felt that way. That's great. Oh, that yeah. Means- Thank you. Yeah, a, a lot of people felt that way, but oh. but you have a personal endorsement. Yes, it was. Yeah, it, thank it you. It was great. It was fabulous. So, you. do you have any? Do you have any fun behind the scenes stuff that of all of your shenanigans that happen on set? Has anything? <laughs> <laughs> has um, any, anything noteworthy? Uh, that's like a funny joke. Um, I mean, anything. It's it's all hilarious, but uh, behind the scenes, it's we're, we're, it's such a good group of people, you know. Yeah. And I think everyone is a jokester, and everyone's got a really great sense of humor. That you know, for sometimes how deep those scenes are, it can be um, just such a really nice place um, behind the scenes and filled with yeah. laughter. The last thing I can think of actually wasn't even. Um, wasn't even on the show, but it was Chris and I were doing an interview with the Holman family and uh, they wanted us to take over um, the When Calls the Heart uh, Instagram. And I, and Chris was like, yeah, I think they just want to do it. Like they want to, they want us to walk around and uh, kind of just do some behind the scenes at Home and Family. And I was like, we should steal a golf that. cart and go around <laughs> Universal Studios. And he's like, I don't know if they'd let us. I was like, let's just do it. It'll be really funny. Um, so that was, you know, I thought that was, I had a lot of fun with Chris kind of just, I think we just rode around for maybe 20 minutes and just, yeah, I, that was, that was, was a lot of fun. I had a great time. That was hysterical. That, yeah. Oh man. And with, and with both of you in beards, you look like brothers. Yeah. You so look like brothers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Maybe that's why one of us, we both can't have it. And let's say that'd be a funny storyline to see the Nate that he like, Lucas is like, you know, taking the lead and then Nathan comes in like dressed up as Lucas. Oh, so, in a blue suit to show off those blue, blue eyes. Yeah. And he's, like, <laughs> he's like trying to shuffle cards, but he's terrible at them and they're falling apart. Yeah. Just oh, desperate that, measures. Oh, that'd be him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and, and that would definitely be a desperate measure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey guys, Cami here. If you're enjoying this episode, then have you ever thought about becoming a patron? Because when you are a patron, not only do you get to hear all of this awesome stuff, but you get giveaways and access to them. You get exclusive episodes that only you hear. And the best part is you can be a patron on Patreon for as low as $2 a month. So with all of this chilly weather that's going on outside, and you want that nice cup of hot chocolate to cuddle up with, yeah, it costs less than that. Less than a cup of hot chocolate per month. So if that sounds like something good to you, then go to Patreon and you can join for as little as $2 a month. And remember, you get exclusive episodes that only you hear, and you get to participate in giveaways, which, awesome. We got some really awesome swag happening. So come and join us and we can't wait to see ya. Okay, so about the tongue-tied issue. 
Mm-hmm. So one one thing I noticed, because uh, of course I also watch uh, When Hope Calls as well, and I noticed just how different Nathan was in Brookfield versus Hope Valley. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, in Brook in Brookfield, you were the boss. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you were sure of yourself. You had authority. You were telling Gabe how stupid he was being by putting himself on the line. Yeah, and it's a, <laughs> it was. I I actually wrote a blog about it. I said, "Mild mannered Mountie or Captain Constable," because <laughs> <laughs> in Brookfield, I mean, you were the take charge kind of guy. There was one point where Nathan showed just a little bit of of in confidence, and that was when you said that you lost the culprit three days ago. But then mm-hmm. it was right back to business as usual. And then, of mm. course, you know, we get into Hope Valley and, you know, you've got, you've got to deal with a lot more elements than you do in mm-hmm. Brookfield. And that was kind of my theory that, you know, you're, you're around Elizabeth and that makes you tongue tied. And then you're trying to raise a preteen girl, which can yes. be yeah. a minefield in and of itself. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Right there. And you'll see, I think, again, in the, the upcoming season, you're going to see when it comes to the job, I think he's very um, capable, you know, like, but uh-huh. it's, it, it, and that's really his strength, I think, is, is, uh, he's almost like the Superman where, like, you know, he's Clark Kent around uh, Elizabeth, around how to raise a young girl, like, just things that he is so unsure of, he, you know, that, that's where he gets tongue-tied, that's where he gets um, second-guessing himself, like, on the spot where the things that he is sure of the you know he is the truth justice and the american way um that superman is like or the when canadian he is way. a policeman or the canadian way truth <laughs> justice the canadian way um <laughs> that he is he's that when it comes to um his job you know and that's why when brookfield you know like that that was there on a mission that was there and you know different um re- Report, eh? report, report, report with um, rapport. Mm-hmm. Rapport, thank you. with uh, with Gabe. You know, like I mean, yeah. I, I, we kind of had a talk of the, you know, they knew each other, and so you'll see that in the in the upcoming season, in season seven, when he goes on, he does a few more missions, and there's a more, you know, more things where he's off on him on his own, where he's he's much more sure of himself. There's no, you know, even in this last one when he arrested uh, Donny uh, Edmonds. Edmonds, yeah uh-huh that. yeah like he was there was no messing around right oh that was oh that was to get classic. off at the end yeah that yeah. that was that was the most awesome moment when he when he says i don't suppose you'd let an old family friend off with a warning and just click no yeah <laughs> <laughs> i yeah. love yeah. that moment too. It was so yeah. cool. <laughs> thank you yeah and that's who that guy i think that's who nathan is in elements that he feels comfortable in and, and, and sure of himself in. But Elizabeth and Allie have a tendency to knock him off his feet. Um, so you to know, speak. <laughs> by just being themselves. Yeah, yeah. And he's just not right. sure, you know, like he, so, you know, children and women are not, um, not his strength. <laughs> and he's trying his best. He's trying his best. But um, you can, I think he almost enjoys going to work. <laughs> He's like, okay, I, I get this. I know this. Oh, good. It's a bad guy that has a gun. And, you know, it's, I, I, I understand that. I, I can take This I can handle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so speaking of that mission, uh, there, were, there were a couple of people that I talked to that were curious about the stunt of you being blown up by dynamite. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a yeah, slow motion that, video of that. That was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what I wanted to know because I assumed that there was a stunt man somewhere involved, but also yeah. it, there was a very clear shot of your face. So yeah. How did, tell us about the movie magic behind that blast. Oh, I mean, it's just angles, angles, yeah. different <laughs> angles. I mean, you know, we did one where they, where they blast um, was behind me. And I jumped from it, like, towards the camera. Okay. So that, that must be where the, my face was there. But the other one, and why, I'm, why I was able to have a, a, a video of it, is my stunt double was, um, like, he was, on, they had him on a, on a cable that, you know, they would, ah. a group of guys would pull down and he would kind of fly up over the, uh, 
the explosion, but they, they did the actual pyro explosion and then, uh, and then they pulled him up like, and he flew over the, uh, over the fire, but it was from a different angle. And then they must've cut, you know, at the beginning to my face, but no, no, I, I only got, I wish I did my own stunt there. I wish I could say, yeah, no, I just, I just did it because it's my job. Do you have, um, do you have stunts that you do yourself? Um, I've done, you know, if, if I can, I was in, uh, <laughs> although I got, we lost with the cutting room floor, but I was in, um, one of the triple X movies, the, the Vin Diesel uh-huh. thing. And I got to do like this fight scene and they brought a stunt Ooh. coordinator in, but I was like, Oh, I think I can do it. And, uh, <laughs> anyways, I got to, they let me. Cool. Um, yeah, it was great. Uh, it ultimately did not make it in the movie, but, uh, oh, darn. D- them's the breaks. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. I just, I, I assumed that I was too good. I assumed that they were like, this guy is still in focus. This, <laughs> this small fight in the scene in the movie is, people are going to be wondering what this is all about and we just can't have that so that's what i like to do oh absolutely yeah that's probably what happened um hands down hands probably down. but also <laughs> they're on on that sh- on um when hope calls i don't know if i can say it because i guess they they played it already anyways yeah so i you know he does come back for, for one more episode um you'll see nathan and, and gabe working together and there's a moment where they're running and uh, I lost my footing and I fell <gasps> while we were just like running normally. It was oh, no. like, I, I just looked like an idiot. I mean, it wasn't, I was, I was the game get up, but I guess they got uh, like, it was while we were shooting. Well, they got that take and uh, it made it into the dailies and it went back to Alfonso, the showrunner. And then he texted me he's like, am I going to have to get a stunt double for you to run down the street? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> like, no, I can run. It's fine. It's just, the gravel came. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, anyway. Oh, that's funny. So, yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. But I can run, everyone. Don't worry. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> no broken ankles. No broken funny. ankles. Yeah. I'm a capable person. No, I remember. I remember when it came out on uh, Hallmark Movies Now, because that's where I first saw it. I said, man, good thing that Nathan didn't die because then he would have died on another show. That's like going to another dimension and dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would have been very yeah, awkward be for weird. one calls It would the be heart. weird they kill him <laughs> off on another show. That would be weird. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay, so I actually want to talk for a minute about the scenes with Nathan's dad. So I don't know if this was an actual choice for for you and Michael Hogan or if it just kind of happened, but that first scene when he shows up and then the two of you go into the jail and he's getting you caught up. He just got out of jail three weeks ago and he says something about trying to find your mother and you say, no, she's got a new life. Yeah. Was it a character choice or did it just kind of happen that the two of you started to sound like each other? You, you, you almost started mirroring each other. So you actually looked like father and son. It was really, oh, really? really awesome the way it played out. And I remember writing down, because, you know, I was, I was uh, writing down notes for when we do the recaps. And I said, oh, my gosh, did they do that on purpose? That looks so <laughs> awesome. So. I wish I could say, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I... I'll just attribute that to Michael's uh, great performance then. Maybe he did it. Maybe he was like, this, this will be great. I definitely was, it didn't, didn't cross my mind. I think I was just burning up with anger. Um, the the, that's the so Canadian rage definitely the came Canadian out. The Canadian, red hot <laughs> Canadian rage. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, no, I didn't, that wasn't planned on my part. Um, so that's really well, interesting. Well, it looked fabulous. Great casting. <laughs> and also, yeah, I, I, let's just say that Michael planned that and he's brilliant. <laughs> Michael is a fantastic actor. Okay. Yeah, so, so really quick, I want to just kind of throw this in here. Heartland. So is that, are you still, are you going to show up in, in Heartland again in 2020 or is that if- still under wraps or? I think if they, if they'll have me, um, I'm pretty, if, and if it goes again, yes, I am. I'm, I'm pretty sure you, you'll see me. I don't think Mitch is going anywhere. Um, okay. well, 
that's what I think. I don't, I could get a call right after this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Um, wait, is this how you tell me? Is there is somebody else on the other line? Um, <laughs> no, I think there's, I mean, it's not official right now and nobody, I, I, I don't know what's going on with the show. I don't know if it is, if it's going to get a green light for uh, season 14, which is wild. Um, uh, but I know it's a very popular show and, um, I'd be surprised if it didn't. And mm -hmm. if that was, and if that's the case and if they do come back, um, yes, the, the show's reached out already and been like, would you, would you like to come back? Would we, you know, so yes, I, you'll see Mitch again if the show's back. All right. So besides lying about being able to ride a horse, <laughs> <laughs> And, and having Amber teach you how to rope, what was your favorite, what was your favorite part of being on the show? Or what is your favorite part? Oh, well, um, on Heartland? I mean, that yeah, is, I, I really think that I love going back to that, um, that production, that cast, um, the crew. Uh, again, we've got yeah, a lot of, we've got directors. a lot of double hearties. We've got a lot of double hearties who <laughs> love When Calls the Heart and Heartland. It is. It's a great show, you know, and it's, I owe that show a lot because, you know, I, I've been part of that show season nine. So it was a 13 or four, mm -hmm. it'll be five. I go back. Like I, I, I was able to learn a lot um, on that show and, and had the opportunity to kind of get better as an actor. So, and I mean, we're, we're working with Michelle. There is a type of chemistry that I think we have that's, we just kind of get along. Um, oh yeah, it's so I like, palpable. I like, yeah, all stuff with her is great. I really like uh, working with Chris too. I think he's uh, kind of um, <laughs> not Chris. I mean, I mean, I like working with Chris too. But no, Chris um, Potter. Potter. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you know, I think he plays his character really well. He's not so grumpy in real life. Um, <laughs> I'm glad to hear he that. <laughs> he, uh, yeah. Oh, he can be, but no, he's 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 very nice. Um, but he just, you know, he's been in the business for so long that he's got, uh -huh. when he talks, I really try to listen. And same with, um, with Sean, you know, like Sean's such a great character yeah. actor, you know, and I was like, oh man, that's not his, 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 his whole look is not what he looks like in real life and the way he's, his cadence and the way he speaks and it's all, right. I mean, it, it just comes from a different world, a different school of, of acting that, that works really well, I think for him. Um, Anyways, that it's fun to, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's fun. There's so many personalities on that show and everybody works such a different way that it's fun to watch that, you know, as mm -hmm. at least I wasn't outside. I think I, I've graduated to like a uh, sidekick on that show. I, you know, I was outside right now. I'm kind of, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's really fun to watch everybody work and everyone's just so lovely. And the scenery is insane. Like I remember. Oh, gosh. I remember having Potter was directing an episode and, and Sean and I had to like move this uh, herd across a field and they were the, you know, they went down to the other end of the field, which was like two football fields away and they called action and Sean and I heard it, heard this, heard it, heard, heard it, this, um, herded. herded this cattle through these two mountains um oh. and this it, it was just beautiful like i mean and there was no acting like it was just we were <laughs> we had to make sure the cow didn't go anywhere yeah um <laughs> and it was just amazing like there it, it beats uh you know a beats a crappy desk. studio yeah yeah like you know a <laughs> studio in mississauga or something like that any day over yeah it, it's great i uh, the scenery is such a big thing calgary Alberta so beautiful it really uh -huh. is yeah yeah uh, my sister-in-law is Canadian my my uh, brother's wife and uh, so I've visited a couple of times and oh it yeah it's it's gorgeous <laughs> yeah 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 I mean there's elements yeah, my, of like like a Texas kind of style it, it is it's really it's yeah it's oh beautiful. I'm from Texas so. oh no kidding <laughs> lovely you that you would so say great. that yeah <laughs> Actually, where um, I, are you from? I, I, to... I drove through Texas. I went through East Texas. Really? And I thought Texas was beautiful. Yeah, East. We were in, um, where's this, where's the hip spot right now that everyone's going that's, uh, all the bands are there. What's the, uh, Austin, South Austin. by Southwest. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it's canceled right now because of the virus. I know. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, 
but I'm I'm ten minutes away from Austin. That's where oh, I live. That's, it was so, such yeah. a beautiful. So the barbecue there was amazing. Oh, nobody does barbecue time. like Texans. Oh, amazing. I I wish I could remember where we went. But my buddy probably thought, Rudy's. This, probably Rudy's. That sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. And it was like Rudy's the has some of the just... best. Oh yeah, oh. Rudy's has some of the best barbecue around. <laughs> yeah, I loved Texas. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Great. We'll have to have you back to try Bluebell ice cream. Oh, man, I'm there. Oh, I'm yeah. There. Oh, yeah. I, I have to tell you, my favorite scene that I have seen yet uh, with you in Heartland is when Mitch and Peter are trying to take care of Lindy. And the, <laughs> oh, yeah. And the two of them are just bumbling through it. Yeah. And we got to find Lammy. We got to find Lammy. And Peter hands Mitch, this is a pig, Peter. You know, yeah. <laughs> Get your head in the game. Yeah. That was yeah. my favorite scene. I think, oh, we, that, was I think that was a little improv. I think we, because Gabe is such a funny guy and he's so quick I too that I think it. they kind of let us just do a little bit of our own thing with some of that. So, yeah, that was great. Oh, well, and good thing the baby behaved. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think babies and horses. I've just, oh, my, my career goodness. as well. There's always like, okay, make sure the baby's head is not always facing the camera just in case they're crying. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So um, we've got, we've got some fun moments coming up for fatherly moments, it sounds like. Just you know, just from, from things that you've said and things coming up, it sounds like Allie and Nathan are going to have more, uh, yes. more guardian, guardian and yep. niece time. It's, those moments are wonderful to watch. Anything you can tell us about upcoming episodes without revealing too much? Um, I've said, I said this on another podcast too, that I just, I think you're going to see and, and Nathan, he it's a challenging season for him and it's going to get more challenging. You're going to see him try to step a little outside of his comfort zone and fail and, and how he <laughs> deals with certain things. And it's a challenging season for Nathan. Um, right. And it was, again, fun to play and fun, like, you know, cause nobody's a perfect person and it is, um, he's not like, he's not like a bad thing, a bad guy, but he just kind of lets certain emotions get the better of him a little bit. Right. Uh, but his passion's there. I mean, he's not definitely. He's, he's he's definitely a passionate guy. But yeah, he definitely he he gets challenged in the upcoming. Uh, I think it takes a couple episodes. Or whatever. Yeah, it's fun to play. Like just kind of like a, a real character that somebody you know that, that doesn't always pick the right thing to do and has to like deal right. with those. And the other thing is that a nice thing is he's got an arc that doesn't wrap up in one episode you know what I mean like you're mm -hmm. gonna kind of see it's gonna take Always a little while good. for him to find the right yeah yeah so Always like don't good. give up yeah. on him when he's you know not at his best um but he uh his heart's in the right place and um <laughs> yeah that's all I, like I'm trying not to give things away it's not like I'm no I'm you're doing great of, you're doing yeah. great <laughs> yeah well, yeah. we actually have to finish up, but this has been so much fun talking to you. Oh, yeah. Thank you so, so much. Thank so, you. Uh, where, can, where can people find you on social media? Oh, I said this on the other one. My cell phone number is 524 <laughs> No, I, I don't know. I mean, I just Google my name and I think, I'm on Instagram. I don't even, I think my handle is Kevin McGarry W. Something like that. And then. I think you're right. Yeah. There might be some underscores in there. I really. now I you know what the W better. stands for. And there you go. There you go. <laughs> Anybody listen to you, you're, you're, you're in on the, you're in on it. Um, yeah. Oh I goodness. should spend more time getting better at the social media stuff, but uh, that's I'm basically Instagram and I've got a Twitter handle that I'm, I sometimes will sneak on and try to tweet some stuff during, uh, during, uh, the show, but um, I just I watch them through through screeners because we don't have the Hallmark Channel in Canada, right. or I don't have it, so I kind of I have to watch it first on the screener, and then uh, and then I just kind of look at people's tweets and try to be like, oh yes, I remember that. And, <laughs> you know, well, we love watching you, and we look forward Aww. to it. We we Thank look you. forward to seeing what you're gonna do. Thank you. So good luck with the rest of the season. And I am 95% certain we'll see you for season eight. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that 95%. Thank you very much. All this right. Is a lot of fun.
Have a great rest of your day and happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, we'd like to thank Kevin for coming on. And if you would like to follow the podcast, please do so all over social media. You can listen on iTunes. And you can also go to YouTube and give us a thumbs up. We'd love it. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Cami Drama Girl. You can find me on Facebook with the Hooked Hardy Facebook page. And my blog is hookedhardy.com. Have a fabulous hearty day, everybody. Bye-bye.